Bonjour everyone. I'm very glad to be here with you, uh, right up to Autodesk. And uh, I think you will receive a very different presentation from Graphisoft today than Autodesk. So we try and focus on design, we try and focus on architecture, and we try and focus on problems, big problems. But before I start, uh, let me just uh, give you one uh, piece of information about Graphisoft if, if you uh, don't know us very well. So we are the developers of ArchiCAD, um, design uh, BIM solution for architects. And uh, we have come up with um, the concept of virtual building in the 80s, which eventually became uh, BIM as we know today. So today I would like to talk about a little bit of the present and then the future. And I start with a question. My question to you is how much do you think, how well do you think we are doing in construction these days? I'm asking this because there are lots of projects happening, technology is advancing very well. So one would assume that uh, the construction or the AC industry is on a very high trajectory. Um, if you look at some key KPIs of our industry, then uh, it pretty much is the opposite case, uh, unfortunately. I guess many of you know uh, this uh, chart. This is from the um, Office of uh, Nas National Statistics uh, from the UK. They do lots of useful research, they do lots of useful publications about uh, data, such as this one on this slide. So this is to show you the uh, productivity of different sectors compared to each other. This is a 20 years span in time, so from 1997 to uh, 2017. And uh, unfortunately, our sector, the AC sector, is at the very bottom indicated with red. So it seems like we didn't advance much in the past two decades. Now, uh, what could be the reason for that? And this is not just a theoretical question, it's a question we have been asking ourselves for the past few years because we really want to solve big problems, these kinds of problems. And uh, when you want to figure out the root cause of things, then there is a, a good management technique called the five whys. It's uh, taken the children's technique when they learn about the world and they ask always, why, why, why? Uh, management uh, consultants say that after roughly five whys, you will get to the root cause. So that's what we did in the past years. Uh, and this is what drives our development efforts to. So, the question is, why is construction so much lacking behind even the average of the industry, but like very much more behind manufacturing? First level answer to that is because in the construction industry, automation is really not happening. Or to translate it to more, you know, IT terms, uh, the digitalization or digitization of the construction industry is really the very last. We try to fancy ourselves for the past decade or so that, okay, so agriculture is behind us. But this research clearly shows that construction is the very last. Now comes the second why. Why is that uh, construction industry is so much lagging with digitization and automation? There is a good reason for that. The reason is because the construction industry is one of the most fragmented industries in the world. So, and there are many ways uh, in which you can understand or imagine why we are fragmented. One example is maybe the primary reason is that we are producing one of products, uh, like buildings. Every building is different. We try to automate, you know, buildings to be created in factories in the 60s and 70s with panel blocks uh, didn't turn out very well. Um, but still, uh, we have to be able to do better than this. So, uh, let me dig deeper a little bit. So, uh, 
why, why, other than that, than creating one of products called projects, is our industry so much fragmented? And the answer to that why is because there are multiple stakeholders. Uh, one of project teams for each and every single project, mixing up project by project, with a very specific goals, uh, set of deliverables, and with a very polarized view of the whole process. So if I want to translate it into blunt terms, then uh, we in the construction industry, we live and work in silos. We only care for our world, our deliverables, we try to avoid legal risk, we try to just focus on delivering what we are required to, and we don't worry about, we don't see the big picture. And that's, I believe, what we should change. That's what we are working on. But before telling some words about the solution, let me give you some tangible problems with this silo approach. One of which is uh, the current uh, status quo of our industry. So, um, even though each and every stakeholder needs to deliver their own stuff, own deliverables, they need to coordinate. Uh, and for that, uh, there is an established workflow where, for instance, an architect using ARCHICAD and a structural engineer using TECLA, they, on a periodical uh, base, sync with each other. They exchange files. So this is a file-based approach, and with that you understand uh, why is it so cumbersome and why is it so hard to automate. And this is not just laborious, it's prone to errors too. So just an example, uh, when you exchange information multiple times with multiple parties, communication errors happen. So this is a funny example, but still similar things happen construction site that someone um, thinks that a, a revision cloud or a markup entity is an actual construction element and is being cast into stone for eternity. So we can definitely or we should definitely do better than that. But I think the ultimate problem with the silo effect or the silo setup is this. Since everyone is only worrying on their, their part, Everyone creates purpose-made deliverables. Even if they create BIM models, they create an architectural BIM, a structural BIM, an MEP BIM, and whatever BIM, a design model, let's say, which is good to um, deliver the design intent, but is really not good to actually deliver the building itself. So not construction ready, for instance. That's why along the AC process, there are these huge breaks or uh, kickbacks in the level of information uh, handed over and carried on throughout the process. So, um, what can we do here? As I started my presentation with, uh, we really tried to find big problems, root causes, and, and solve them. And we believe that if we can facilitate a paradigm shift, a major fundamental paradigm shift, and the uh, move away from uh, this silo approach where coordination is the basic workflow, and uh, move into a realm where everyone works really together on the building itself in a virtual way, which we call collaboration. So we believe that if we can break down the silos, then uh, product, the entire industry's uh, productivity uh, can be boosted like magnitudes uh, uh, level. So what we need to do then, what we need for that. Um, Graphisoft uh, 35 years ago, 37 years ago in 1982 had a vision. We called it virtual building where we envisioned uh, a sort of a digital copy, a digital twin of the physical world in a particular building to be uh, built, uh, being created in the computer, in a virtual way. And since um, everything was in our vision integrated into this virtual building model, building information model, then 
there was no need for any synchronization or coordination. It was just a central single source of truth and everything, all the deliverables were just derivatives. So that has been the vision. And to some extent, it has happened. So I think we all agree that there is full-fledged BIM solutions for each discipline. So for instance, for architects, if they use ArchiCAD or Revit or uh, Allplan, um, they in, in that scope, BIM is pretty much mature. The problems come when the different trades need to work together uh, in a much more uh, integrated way. And for that, uh, there are three things necessary. And that's what we have been working on uh, at Graphisoft. And uh, let me walk you through those uh, very briefly. So the very first one is that uh, these individual BIM environments need to be brought together and need to be made into one actual real uh, digital twin of the uh, physical world. So if you want to imagine a building, it's uh, pretty much like a human body. So uh, if you look at me, you can see my clothes and skin. But if I go to the doctor and an x-ray goes through me, then you can see my load-bearing structures, my skeleton. Or if I need to go to a, a, a hospital for operation, then they see uh, my guts, which is kind of like the piping uh, systems of a building. So, but still, it's me. It's one integrated body, one integrated person, and we believe the buildings can and should behave this way too, in the digital world as well. So now that we are um, going through this digital delivery uh, route, uh, we are heavily working on um, introducing the several layers of a BIM model into a single source of uh, truth and uh, try and make it uh, a reality that BIM is really one model and everyone can work off of uh, that model. Uh, just one specific example, uh, we talked about you know the skin and the uh, skeleton, the bone system. So. Um, uh, the the uh, structures and the analytical model uh, is something like that in buildings. So we are working on uh, integrating these two worlds uh, with automation, so with digital help, with AI, and uh, make it much easier and uh, much more handy for a structural designer to design uh, the uh, load-bearing um, logical structure of the building. Of course, lots of things are uh, involved or included here, like quality assurance and stuff like that. But uh, this is just an illustrative example of what is necessary uh, for the software to cater for a combined workflow. So, now let's imagine uh, everything is in one database uh, now. Um, what else do we need to make um, this multidisciplinary collaboration a reality? We need to allow different people, different teams, different uh, trades to work on this. So we need to provide access to this such a database. We have a, a patent technology to help that. Um, this helps um, break down um, a huge data into a granular database so that um, software access can be made based upon not just files, meaning a project level, but an element level. And uh, the next phase of, of this technology we are working on right now is allowing uh, multiple stakeholders to access single elements uh, simultaneously. So imagine that for instance with a column or a wall. Uh, why, why cannot the architect uh, advance or enhance the outlook of that um, building element while the structure engineer deals with the load-bearing uh, capacities of the very same element? And they shouldn't bump into each other doing so. They should be able to do that simultaneously. So our vision uh, that we are working on right now is that uh, we should even further granulate uh, this sort of database approach and 
we should allow access on the parameter uh, level to our BIM data, providing uh, the different stakeholders to really deal with the aspect or the layer of the model uh, that they uh, have to uh, worry about. So this is the second leg of, 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 of this uh, future solution. The third leg is, is all about um, providing the necessary workflow and processes to uh, make it happen. So good that everything is in one place. If someone changes something, then there is no synchronization needed because the, the reality changes. Uh, but still, uh, there may be conflicts of interests or that they may be, there may be uh, larger teams where they cannot really just agree on what to do uh, in a combined uh, team. Uh, so we are also working on uh, the process layer of, of this uh, future solution, which is uh, catering for both high trust and low trust workflows. I wonder if you understand these two concepts, high trust, low trust, and which one you believe is more advanced or more severe. Uh, these are funky uh, marketing terms for, uh, you know, low trust is when uh, there is a uh, fragmented team in different locations, they cannot face-to-face -face agree on workflows, so you have to have rigid uh, workflow support, uh, not to uh, allow anybody to ruin the other's work, that's low trust. High trust is for projects where really an uh, AE, AE team sits together like an agile development team, a full stack team, and they deliver the project really uh, um, in one concerted effort, then high trust is a way to uh, make it transparent and visible for everyone to see what happens and uh, providing the workflow necessary to uh, work together. So. Uh, these are basically the two, three conceptual legs of a future paradigm uh, Graphisoft is working on today. Um, and I would like to reuse the word trust here because um, changing paradigms is always very hard. Um, you have to break down conventions, you have to break down silos, you have to move people out of their comfort zone. So I think what this future BIM is all about is providing technology support for building actual trust in the multidisciplinary design team. And if we are successful with that, obviously then uh, we eliminate all this synchronization and all these errors of misunderstanding each other. Uh, lots of waste can be saved, but I think uh, even more importantly, the process or the workflow is not bro broken along the way. So the design model can actually become the construction model and the construction model can actually become the opera operations database of the building. So in my view, BIM, although it has been at least two decades old, the naming or uh, three and a half decades old, the concept is really just at the starting point so great things are happening uh, in the coming decades, and we are very excited about uh, being part of that. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.